In this video, we're going to demonstrate the steps that you need to follow if you need to extend the financial year to more than 12 months in Sage 50 accounts. We'll work through each of the steps in turn, and there are either three or four steps depending on your level of the software. Step one is to change the financial year start date. To do this, from the settings menu, you choose financial year, this shows you what your current start date is set to, and then you click change. Now remember before completing this option, as the warning suggests, you should check your data in file maintenance and also take a full backup of your data. Assuming you have, you click yes. A warning then appears advising you of the impact that changing your financial year will have. And if you're happy to proceed, you click yes. You're then able to change the financial year start date. The current 12-month financial year in our software runs January 2017 to December 2017 and we want to extend our financial year to end at the end of March 2018. So we need to set the start date to the beginning of the 12-month period so that it will end at the end of the required period, in this case March 2018. So we need to choose in this example April 2017. You then click OK Click yes to confirm you want to make the changes and click OK to the prompt that confirms it's been changed successfully. You then click OK to return to the Sage Accounts desktop and that's step one complete. Step two is to print the trial balance. To do this open the nominal codes window and then from the toolbar click trial balance. Now we'd recommend that you do print this report but at this stage we're just going to preview it. We need the report to show the current brought forward balances. So from the drop down, you need to scroll to the top of the list and choose brought forward. We we'll click OK. The report previews and we'll just zoom in to make it a little bit bigger. The information that we're after are the balances against any PL nominal codes. So generally, if you're using the default nominal ledger, that'll be from 4,000 all the way down to the end of the report. As you can see, there's quite a few nominal codes with value, so we do recommend that you print this report. I'll just OK the default print settings, and then we can close out the report. Back to the desktop, and that's step two complete. Step three is to reverse the PL values that are identified on the brought forward trial balance. Now, depending on your level of the software, you may be able to combine step 3 and 4 into the same process. You will need to check if you've got the reversing journals option to be able to do this. To check if you have this option available to you, open the settings menu, choose company preferences, enter your password, you then click the parameters tab. The option we're looking for is enable reversing journals. If this is available to you, tick the box, then click OK. If it's not available to you, don't worry, you can still complete the process, but you will need to manually complete step 4. So once we've enabled the option, click OK. We then return to the Sage Accounts desktop and we're ready to reverse our brought forward PL balances. And we do that by going into Nominal Codes and choosing Journal Entry. We'll then enter a reference, so in this example we'll just enter FY change, and then we need to change the posting date. You need to set the posting date to the date prior to the start of what you've just set the financial year to begin. So in our example, we set the financial year to begin April 2017, so we need to set the posting date to the 31st of March 2017. As you tab out of the posting date field, a warning will appear just to advise that the date you've entered is outside of the current financial year. You just click OK to this to proceed. You're then ready to start reversing out the brought forward PL balances. So with your report in front of you, start with your first PL nominal code, which by default is nominal 4000. In this example, we're going to ignore the extra reference and the department code. And then in the details, we'll just enter financial year change. 
the tax code should be set as your non votable tax code, which is T9 by default. We then need to enter a value which will reverse out the brought forward balance. Now, in our trial balance that we looked at earlier, nominal 4,000 had a credit balance of just over £19,000. So we enter the equivalent value to reverse it in the debit column. We'll leave the credit column blank and tab down to enter the next nominal code that was identified on the brought forward trial balance, which in this case was nominal 4001. Again, we'll ignore the extra reference and the department. And to save typing in the details each time, we can just press F6 on the keyboard, which copies whatever's in the box above. Again, the journal should be posted with the non valuable tax code, T9. And as nominal 4001 had a credit balance on the brought forward trial balance, we enter the same value from the report into the debit column to reverse it. We then just tab down to the next line and continue reversing the values from the brought forward trial balance. To save time with the demonstration, we'll skip to the end of the journal where we've entered all of the values from the report. We've now entered all of the reversing journal balances. To be able to save the journal, the total of the debits and credits must balance. So we need to post a balancing journal for the difference. We post the journal to our profit and loss nominal account, which by default is 3200. Once again, we'll skip past the extra reference and the department code. Press F6 to copy the details down. Make sure we've got the non votable tax code specified, so T9, as for all of the other journals. And then we need to post the balancing entry in either the debit or the credit column. As you can see, the debits outweigh the credits, and to save you calculating the difference manually, this is calculated for you at the top. So we can see the debits are £43,042.34 greater than the credits. So in this case, to balance the journal, we need to post that value in the credit column. The debit and credit totals are now equal, and as you can see, the balance at the top is zero. At this stage, we're actually ready to save the journal. However, to save us a little bit of time, if you had the option to enable reversing journals, you need to tick the reverse journals checkbox and set the reversing date to the first day of the financial year within the software. So in our example, we set the start date to begin April 2017. So we set the start date to the 1st of April 2017. Now, if you don't have the reverse journals option, don't worry, you just need to complete step four manually. If you have selected these options, you don't need to complete step four. So we're ready to save our journal. So we click save. Again, you'll be prompted that the date is outside the current financial year. Do you want to continue? You click yes. The journal posts and we can click close. To complete step three, you just need to make sure that the P&L balances have been cleared properly. So to do this, we run the brought forward trial balance again. You click trial balance, and you don't need to print it this time, we can just preview the report, and then we choose brought forward from the period drop down. You then click OK, the report previews and we just need to ensure that there are no profit and loss nominal codes so by default that's 4000 onwards that are included on the report which there aren't in this case so we've completed the process and we can click close you then return to the nominal codes window and that's step three complete now if you did post the reversing journal so by ticking the box and entering the date at the bottom of the journals window that is your process complete if you didn't do that or didn't have that option available to you, you now need to move on to step 4. Step 4 involves posting a journal to post your P&L values from the brought forward trial balance into what will be the start of your current financial year in the software. So we need to post another journal. To do this we go into nominal codes and then journal entry. You need to enter a reference and then enter the date for the journal. 
Now in this example, it needs to be the first day of the start of your 12 month period in the software. So in our example, we set the financial year to begin April 2017, so that the financial year will end at the end of March 2018. So we need to date our journal the 1st of April 2017. We can then tab down and start entering details of the journal. So in this case, we need to refer back to the brought forward trial balance report that we printed in step two and enter the first P&L nominal code that had a balance. So in our example, nominal code 4000. Once again, we'll ignore the extra reference on the department, enter some details, and the tax code should default to your non vatable tax code. Again, T9 by default. You then need to enter the value in either the debit or the credit column as per the brought forward trial balance report that you printed earlier. In our example, nominal 4000 had a credit balance on that report, so we enter that value into the credit column. We then continue working through the brought forward trial balance, entering the P&L balances against the relevant nominal codes. To save time, we'll skip to the point where we've entered those figures. We've now entered all of the values as per the brought forward trial balance. Before we can save the journal, the total of the debits and credits must be equal, which they aren't in this case. The credits outweigh the debits. And the difference is outlined in the balance value at the top. Just like with the reversing journal, we post the difference to our nominal 3200, which is our profit and loss account. Just as with the other lines, we'll skip past the extra reference and the department code. Press F6 to copy the details. Leave the tax code set to T9. And then enter the difference in either the debit or the credit column. So in our example, we need to enter that difference into the debit column. The total of the debits and credits now balance, and we can click Save. You then click Close. You return to the nominal codes window and that's the process complete.